All right, so today I'm gonna to do an eight by eight inch oil painting of a corner store at night. Okay, so as you can see, this is kind of a complicated scene for such a small panel. Uh, so I'm gonna do quite a bit of simplifying, uh, but right here to get started, I am mapping out the composition using uh, some burnt sienna that I've thinned with odorless mineral spirits. Just striking some lines, uh, getting the main elements in place and uh, obviously no detail at all, just kind of mapping out the big shapes. Uh, and now I've got a mixture of ultramarine and alizarin crimson to come in and um, sort of establish my darkest darks. And I'm keeping that, uh, that mixture very thin. So again, I'm thinning that with mineral spirits. I will come back later and reinforce some of the darks, um, but this at least you know, gets me started. I know where the darkest shapes are and then I can start keying the other areas or the other shapes or other, um, you know, the other areas to those darks. And, uh, you know, putting in the blue, I lighten the sky as you can see because I kind of wanted to, um, instead of just making it like black or whatever, I wanted to, I wanted to get some color in there. And, and so it's almost pure ultramarine that I use there. Again, keeping it thin because I'm going to come back in and adjust those colors as well. So the main thing right now is just getting the whole panel covered, trying to establish a sense of light fairly early on, uh, which is what I'm doing now, putting some warm colors in the windows and then in the doorways there. Um, and then that street light, which will become a problem that you'll see in a few minutes. Um, so yeah, just trying to cover the whole panel and once the panel is covered, then I can start coming in and making adjustments with this next layer of paint, which is what I've done here. You know, coming in with the sky and um, starting to fill in the sky. Notice too, I used a little bit of cerulean, or not cerulean, but phthalo blue and white on the horizon there to kind of lighten that up so I get some definition with the trees. In the photograph, you can't even really see the trees. All right, so here's the problem, and I'll talk about this in a second, but as I started, you know, diffusing the light in the sky, obviously the yellow is mixing with the blue and turning to green. So I'll talk more about that in a minute. So anyway, I'm gonna keep going here. Um, and now I've decided to get the straight edge out. And as I've talked about before, you know, the straight edge can be really helpful, but you've gotta use it economically. You don't wanna, at least I don't feel like I want I don't want the painting to be too rigid. You know, I want to keep it kind of loose and messy. It's this, it's this delicate balance between, you know, chaos and order. I don't want a tight painting and yet I'm doing architecture. I'm doing a complicated scene on a small panel, no less. So it's just, it's, you know, it's kind of a taste thing. You know, it, it, it's, you just have to experiment. And um, I think I'm, you know, I struggle with it still sometimes, but I, I'm, you know, I'm getting better at finding a good balance between structure and chaos. Anyway, uh, I am definitely pushing color, if you notice. Like, I'm having fun with color. I'm not staying true to the scene. I'm pushing color for the sake of creating light. I mean, I've created light in the windows that's not there. And the light that's in the windows is more blue. I've warmed it up. Um, so I'm, you know... I didn't stay true to the drawing of the buildings either. Uh, it's hard to see, but I'm working really fast on this. Part of it is be because I don't want to have to edit the thing. <laughs> it's like the more, uh, you know, not to complain, but you know, if it's, if I've got like an hour and a half worth of video to edit, it's a lot, it's a lot harder. It takes a lot more time and I wouldn't be able to put out as many videos. So I've really gotten faster, which is a good thing. I recommend painting quickly, making quick decisions. All right, I'm gonna try to limit the glare here, but a couple things I wanna talk about. Number one is I do like the feeling of light I'm getting. It's been a while since I've done like, say a light that's kind of diffused in the sky. You can see where it's blending, it turned to green. So I'm gonna have to take that, you know, scrape that off with a palette knife and redo it. Uh, usually I pr try to do the light before I put the blue in. So I put the light on there and then I'd work the blue towards it. Obviously blue and yellow makes green and that's what I started getting there. I'm going to have to mess around with these windows to get the geometry correct. So now it's just going to be the time consuming 
process of cleaning up some of these lines without you know, without ruining some of the thick paint and the spontaneity that's going on in here. At this stage, it's really important to continue to roll back. Uh, I'm, seated, I'm seated in a rolling chair, so I roll back like six or seven feet to try to get, you know, a look at, uh, to see if it's working. Because when you're right up on the painting, you might think, oh, this is too messy or this is not working. But when you roll back or you step back, you would be surprised. You might be surprised and say, "Oh, you know, that's a. I'm getting a really nice effect right here." And um, so you've got to constantly be backing up and evaluating your work from, like, say, like a small panel like this, maybe five or six feet. Um, you know, even four feet would probably do. Uh, but you want to keep evaluating so that you don't overwork it. Um, from a distance, things may be reading really well and up close, you're like, oh, that looks, you know, it's like too messy or it's whatever. So I'm getting more comfortable with leaving the mess in my painting. It, it adds a certain vitality that, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain, but it really does that the, the messiness adds life. So here is what I finished up with and I fixed the light up here, the street light. And I did end up spending a lot of time on this car just because I wanted it to be constructed out of simple strokes uh, and just suggested. And, and oftentimes I have to do it over and over again to get that sort of uh, spontaneous look. But ultimately, I'm happy with the way that came out. And uh, I did change some of this, you know, uh, in the windows here, put this reddish color down here. Uh, just to kind of create some more warmth in the windows and uh, but overall I think uh, I think I like it actually this here too the light coming out of these doorways and then how that light flows out into the street that was something I uh, definitely spent some time on these rounded sort of turret type windows can be really difficult uh, just the geometry on them can be difficult. You know, you're trying to keep the thing feeling loose and yet you've got all of this detail to, uh, to work with. So that can be a challenge. So I probably would have had an easier time doing this painting on a larger panel, uh, like say a 12 by 12 inch or larger. Uh, it's just a lot of drawing, a lot of information in a small space. But um, I do feel like it's a good exercise sometimes to do these small ones. It, it forces you to simplify. Um, but like I said, I think there's just a bit too much information. Um, you know, although I do feel like it is loose, I have a good balance of looseness and structure. Um, but it, uh, it's easier to do that with a little bit bigger of a panel. So anyway, um, but I still had a great time doing it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.